Hello, my name is Catherine Bollard and I'm here with you from uh, the International Working Group for Non-Hodgkin's Lymphoma. Um, we've just had a very exciting session on the biology of diffuse large B-cell lymphoma with outstanding talks from uh, Dr. Ricardo Favera and uh, Dr. Lou Stout. Um, I would uh, really like to direct my first question to both of them and if they can each summarize uh, what were the highlights of their talks, what were the take-home messages they gave us very, very comprehensive talks about the biology, um, in particular of ABC, um, diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. And I think um, we would then like to hear from Dr. Wyndham Wilson how this will translate into clinical care. So I will first uh, like to hear from our biologist, uh, Ricardo. Right. So lymphoma, diffuse large B-cell lymphoma is a uh, most cancer is a uh, disease that start from changes in DNA, and thanks to uh, modern technology, we now know most of the changes that occur in genes in lymphoma cells. And some of these changes are recurrent in different lymphoma types, and I think our job is to understand uh, what is a normal function of these genes that are mutated, and uh, what happens when they are mutated using uh, molecular biology and mouse models. I think the lessons that we are getting from these studies is that uh, tumors are lymphomas are very smart. They mutate genes that have very fundamental questions in the life of a normal B cells, and they hit regulatory points that derange the normal development of B cells. And the one other general lesson I think that is particularly important in lymphoma is that understanding uh, malignant cells uh, uh, re must rely on understanding of a normal life of a B cell, which is particularly specialized and particularly sophisticated in terms of biology. So today we reported one more uh, biological study of a gene mutated called FOXO1 that has a very particular role in B cell development and leads to a derangement of the architecture of B cells in lymphoma. Thanks. Thank you. Dr. Stout. So we focused on the uh, role of B-cell receptor signaling, and especially in diffuse lymphoma. And as we recently published, uh, the drug Ibrutinib, which targets B-cell receptor signaling, has a high rate of response, uh, produces a high rate of responses in ABC lymphoma compared to the other molecular subtype, GCB. And we then analyzed the tumors a little bit more and and found that uh, to some extent, if you had a mutation that was an activating mutation in the B-cell receptor, patients with those tumors more frequently responded. But in today's talk, what I focused on is that actually most of the patients that responded to abrutinib did not have those mutations in the B-cell receptor, and so why? Why were their tumors addicted to B-cell receptor signaling? And in a nutshell, what we found uh, from laboratory investigations is that the B-cell receptor reacts against self-antigens in an autocrine way. So antigens that are on its own cell surface cause binding and clustering of the B-cell receptor, which leads to signaling um, to downstream pathways that promote the proliferation and survival. So in fact, th we think that many of the lymphomas and B cell malignancies in general may arise from a normal B cell that is, that is self-reactive, that is normally tolerized during, uh, in, in, our, in healthy individuals, but can occasionally give rise to these B cell lymphomas, in which case this self-reactivity is uh, used to maintain the survival of the cell. So in fact, in our cell line models, if we mutate the B cell receptor to lose the ability to interact with the cell self-antigen, the cell lines die. So we, we think that this is a particularly important for understanding where these lymphomas come from, and it's possible that you could even interfere with um, the, the lymphoma therapeutically by targeting agents to this interaction between the B-cell receptor and the antigen. So just before I hand over to Dr. Wilson, because that does segue nicely into what I want him to talk about, I just want to clarify, um, is this more, what your findings are more particular to ABC, um, diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, rather than GCB, is that correct? Yes, so in ABC, 
we see a restricted use of particular immunoglobulin variable regions, which is an indication that, that specificity for antigen is important, whereas in the GCB, we really don't see that as much. Um, so we think that this fits with the fact that this type of active B cell receptor signaling is more important to the ABC type than the GCB. Great, thank you. So Dr. Wilson, I would like, as a leading lymphoma physician, I'd like you to discuss the implications for this at the bedside. Well, you know, the history of uh, lymphoma therapy over the last 30 years has really been mostly taking nonspecific drugs and simply uh, uh, testing them in, uh, in different types of lymphoid diseases. And uh, many advances were made in terms of improving therapeutic outcome. But I think it's fair to say that we pretty much hit a wall in the 1990s and really uh, were not moving the field forward. And I think that the great watershed that has come out is understanding both how the normal biology of these, of these cells is worked out, and then only through understanding the normal biology can we then begin to understand uh, how these tumor cells are able to uh, take advantage of that and uh, harness the normal biology to become a tumor cell. And that, therefore, has revealed a number of very critical uh, pathways as well as targets. And with, uh, with uh, much uh, uh, investment from drug companies, we now have a whole host of targets that can, specifically, uh, uh, that can be specifically uh, druggable, and we can get drugs that can actually hit them. And I think that uh, we've heard today from both Ricardo and Lou what some, of those, uh, what some of those druggable targets may be. And in fact, the field has already identified a, a number of them. Uh, one of the areas that has been a little bit behind in terms of targets has been the germinal center, because it's been more difficult to identify druggable targets. But uh, today, Ricardo uh, talked about a, uh, a newly mutated protein that is in a pathway called the PI3 kinase pathway, and we do now have inhibitors of PI3 kinase that have recently been approved, and I think his work is providing additional evidence that these drugs may have uh, use in some of the germinal center large cells. And then, uh, in terms of what Lou has been, been doing, uh, Lou has identified a, a number of different mutations within the BCR uh, signaling cascade and the toll-like receptor cascade. And there's a variety of drugs that uh, target uh, different points in those, those cascades as well. So I, I think we're seeing a very elegant uh, uh, convergence of understanding both normal biology, tumor biology, and now uh, uh, coming up with drugs and uh, moving them, them forward into clinical trial. And I think that we're beginning to see uh, improvements in uh, outcome over the last five uh, years with some of these targeted agents. So thank you very much. I'd like to thank Dr. Tella Favera, Dr. Stout, and Dr. Wilson for speaking to us today.